Okay, so here is the update. Uh, we're almost at the last day of December and I have my approval from Duke Energy to operate. So I am completely finished all the inspections, all of the approvals, all of, all of that stuff is all done. And so I'm able to operate and sell back to the grid. So uh, kind of a rundown. These are 20 Zen Shine 450 watt bifacial panels. It's mounted onto an APA uh, ready rack system. So that's the ground mount that I used. Uh, the box that I have for the DC bought it off of Amazon, Beaver. Uh, they have several different ones. Make sure you get the one that you L listed. <laughs> uh, the first one I got was not and I had to swap it out. So now I have a UL sticker in it. Uh, a couple of people mentioned that uh, these these weren't in when I originally installed it and uh, I went back and grabbed them and put them in just used uh, a, a punch to, to knock those things in and seal those holes up. Everything else is sealed. Uh, the bottom has a gasket. These are gasketed. I sealed up uh, where the ground and where the conduit comes in. Uh, let's see, inside the box, circuit breaker and a surge protector. Um, they're Chinese. Uh, world sunlight. And the only reason I really used them is I got them at a really good deal from the same guy I bought the solar panels off of. He had them. And so I got two sets. So if anything goes wrong, I can replace bits and pieces. Uh, if I were just doing it from scratch, the way I would do it, uh, I would probably... Uh, I like the, sur the idea of a surge protector. Midnight Solar, I think, is the one that most people would recommend and use and then fuse holders with actual fuses and then an IMO uh, disconnect switch that would probably be the better way of setting this up but this was a good deal um, it seems to work fine the 18k PV has surge protection and all of that built into it uh, not that I would want to rely on that. I don't want to damage that unit. The circuit breaker in this is rated at 16 amps. I'm not doubling up any of the panels. Uh, max output is supposed to be 13 amps. So that's where I'm at with this. Uh, when I did it, <clears throat> I ended up with some Unistrut left over. And... I just used it as additional bracing and to mount up my box. One and a half inch conduit runs uh, from here uh, underground and it comes up into this box and then goes underneath the house. Uh, I had a couple of people mention that, you know, under the house by the newest code. Uh, the DC power is supposed to be in uh, EMT and not uh, PVC pipe. Um, mine's in PVC. Inspector didn't say anything. I wasn't going to say anything. So, if you're doing it and you're <coughs> worried about code, then you would need to do it in EMT if it's uh, under or inside your house. So out here, Duke Energy Meter ends up, they did not need to replace it. Uh, they just reprogrammed it remotely. So they reprogrammed it so it'd be bi-directional. The two switches, uh, the first one, it comes from the meter. It goes into uh, the Siemens. Both of these are Siemens boxes. I got them from Lowe's. Uh, 
it uh, it is a 200 amp fused disconnect so power comes from the meter into the top of this uh, switch through the fuses and then at the bottom there is two sets of lugs one set brings it over into the top of this which is a bypass transfer switch a manual one and the other lugs go through the wall and into the conduit box for the 18 kpv this one so power from the grid comes in to the top comes out of the middle goes up through that conduit and into the wall and into my main power distribution box so uh, from the 18 kpv right power goes in here it comes out in a conduit here connects into the bottom so when the switch is in the down position all of the power from the grid and the solar is being routed through this switch and up and into my main power distribution panel come around here so um, my DC comes from underneath the house my crawl space through the one and a half inch conduit into the flexible conduit and into the, the distribution box so this this setup is all really straightforward the instructions are really good um, so 18 kbv setting on top and power pro battery setting on the bottom and the way this is set up uh, the power pro battery is setting up off the ground about a quarter of an inch mounted to the wall mounted to the studs and from the top of the mounting bracket on the battery to the top of the mounting bracket on for the this is 47 and three quarters of an inches so mounted the two brackets hung the battery and then uh, got the conduit box in and to get this in place I was doing this all by myself I put those two hooks up there lag bolted them into the studs and then used a ratchet strap to come down and connect to the handles to I could pick it up so far but I couldn't pick it up all the way and I used the ratchet straps to pull it up into place and get it uh, up on its hanger uh, in here straightforward load grid battery uh, battery cables really really fine wire uh, that come with this kit um, what I did to get them into the terminals is um, I spun the cable around so basically put it up spin the cable in circles as I insert it and work work all the little wires into place so that it was all nothing sticking out no wires sticking out and everything's seated and tightened down these things uh, they're really hard to get in there right it, it's a tight space what I found is uh, this shell this back uh, strain relief I unscrewed it from the connector and slid it up the cable so that I could get the cable down and locked in place and then I slid this down and screwed it back in I couldn't really find a better way of doing it uh, the, the, like I said just because of how tight the spacing is um, it comes with these also it comes with these little studs that, that go here that screw down into this panel but these panels have screws in them from the outside 
and then it has screws that go down into it from the inside. I pulled these suckers off. They were in the way. It, it was really a pain uh, working around in there with those things sticking up. So I just got some vice grips and pulled them off. So that is the battery, conduit box, and the inverter. And I was setting it up. Uh, we had it set up originally so that it was running in uh, basically like like an off-grid inverter. So it would run off the solar and battery. And if there wasn't enough solar or battery, the elect the transfer switch, the internal transfer switch, would switch to grid. And then if there was enough solar and battery, it would turn the grid off and run entirely off of solar. So there was no way to back feed to the grid. That's how I've been running it up until I got the approval from Duke Energy. And I just went in and I, I made the updates in the menu uh, so that now it does both. It's, it's full hybrid mode now. So I can sell back to the grid if there's any excess and I can use solar and battery uh, seems to work seamlessly. I've ran it this way for uh, two days now uh, with no issues. Um, so anyway, the power, right? The power, that conduit that runs along the top of the wall outside, it comes in up here under this cutout and into the top of my main distribution panel. And then you can see back in the back, I have uh, the power coming in from the 200 amp fuse disconnect and then that conduit going out the back is going out to the 200 amp transfer uh, bypass transfer switch. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, I'm going to get another battery and you can see I don't really have a lot of space. Um, you got 12 inches on each side that you have to keep. So, you know, if I, if I did that math, it puts me here underneath this panel. The problem being, if I put the conduit box on top of it, it'll block my panel. So then, if I come over here farther so that I'm not blocking the panel, and I put the battery here, you know, down here, with the conduit box on top. The problem I run into is it's too far away for the standard cables that they sell. And I would have to build my own cables. So, uh, I'm really thinking that what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna put the battery in front of this one I'm going to take this door off and I have another conduit box and I'm going to cut the back out of the conduit box and I'm going to mate everything directly against this. So, and then I can just uh, strap the two batteries together. So far I haven't seen anything that says that I can't... Uh, that I can't place a battery in front of the other one. All the clearances are for the sides. So that's my thought. Uh, I say the other option is to put it farther over. It'll be a little bit behind my water heater and I would have to build my own cables. But if I place it directly in front of this other one strap the two batteries together, cut the back out of the conduit box, because if you see, this conduit box sticks out from the battery. So if I cut the back out of the other one, it'll actually fit over this so it's all sealed together. So the idea would be to seal the, top con the front conduit box to the back conduit box. I was even thinking of just, you know, using this. 
take this clip off, mount it to the side of the box, and the same with the hinges, mount everything to the back of that new that other conduit box so that it'll set up here. And then the other conduit box has a door on it. <laughs> Basically when you open up that door, you'd be able to see the battery cables for the for the second battery and then everything goes in here and straight up. If anyone has done anything like that or has a, a better idea, uh, I'm all ears. Kind of that's that's kind of the plan right now. Uh, but that's the rundown. If you have questions, uh, what I used to build it, how I built it, whatever. Uh, this is mainly a D DIY project. I did have an electrician install those two switches because we had to pull the meter and hook all of that up. And I'm slow. I needed it done so I could get power back in the house. So I, I hired an electrician to do that part. Uh, but pretty much all the rest of it, building the ground mount, putting the solar panels up, putting the battery on the wall, and hooking up the EG4 uh, inverter. I did all of that by myself with only my own muscle and leverage uh, and to get this stuff all put together. But like I say, if you got questions, uh, leave a comment. Uh, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.